So tonight, I think this is like one of the best nights that you're that you could be here for because we have three alumni who worked on Halloween and who are working on the next two parts, two and three, in the series, and they'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but we're going to do a Q and A with them first, so that we can get to the movie right after. Um, so tonight, I'm proud to have these three alumni here, and our moderator for this evening is current uh, BFA film student and the head of the SVA Horror Society, Matthew E. Taraldi. So let's bring Matthew up with our three alumni, Ryan Turek, Michael Simmons, and Warren Drummond. And while they are making their way to the stage, I'll read their bios. So the first one up, this is Matthew right here in the Halloween shirt. This is Ryan Turek. Ryan's the Vice President of Feature Film Development at Blumhouse Productions. Since joining the company in 2014, he has served as co-producer on Halloween, Unfriended Dark Web, Truth or Dare, Happy Death Day, and Ma. After attending SVA, Turek worked as a journalist running the horror website shocktillyoudrop.com and penning articles for Fangoria and Rue Morgue. Turk discusses the horror genre on the weekly podcast Shockwaves with, uh, with his co-hosts Rebecca McKendry, Robert Galuzzo, and Elric Kane. Closest to me is Michael Simmons. Michael is a cinematographer who has worked on a wide variety of films, including Nerve, White Girl, Project Nim, Chop Shop, Cell, Big Fan, Par and Paranormal Activity 2. On the small screen, he's been behind the camera on The Last OG, Vice Principals, and Smilf, as well as commercials for Google, CoverGirl, Adidas, uh, and Adidas, amongst many others. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Ryan and Michael who wrapped uh, last night's production for Halloween in North Carolina at 5 a.m. and got on a plane and came up to New York for this. So let's give them a big round of applause for being here. And then the gentleman in the hat is Warren Drummond, who was born and raised in Jamaica, Queens, and attended the High School of Art and Design before SVA. Warren's storyboard career began with the films Above the Rim and Major Pain. Uh, in the latter, he met director Nick Castle Jr., who played the shape in the, unma in, the unmasked series, in the unmasked scenes in the original 1978 Halloween, as well as tonight's Halloween. After storyboarding Die Hard with a Vengeance, Warren's career magnified with The Devil's Own and Shaft, which began his 20-year collaboration collaboration with the late John Singleton. Other films include, and there's like 120 on IMDb, <laughs> A Beautiful Mind, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Straight Out of Compton, and Fences. Next year, he will have two more sequels in theaters, Coming to America and Halloween Kills. Warren also storyboards TV, including Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and in 2018, he made his directorial debut with the short Unknown Caller, which was written by and stars his son, Josh Drummond. So let's please, and he flew in from L.A. for this. So let's please welcome Warren, Ryan, and Michael, and Matthew. Hey, everybody. Is this on? Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Testing. Check. Hello. How many um, show of hands amount of students in here right now? All right, so you know your audience now. Anybody, anybody uh, not seen the film you're about to watch? Okay, so spoiler free zone. <laughs> what happened? I know, what happened, guys? Why weren't uh, you there? So let's keep, when we, if we um, kick it out to you guys for questions, rem think of the people who haven't seen the film when you're thinking of the questions that you're going to be asking. Um, Rosebud so, is the slay. Ro yeah, Rosebud. <laughs> spoiler. Michael Myers <laughs> is the killer. Oh, God. We're done. <laughs> That's it. That was, that was my only question. Um, uh, so let's, um, I guess let's go down the line starting with Michael. Um, speak about uh, your time at SVA and uh, where you, I guess, where you kind of saw yourself being and, and then where you've ended up. It might be the same thing, but I guess we'll, we'll start with you and then work our way back down the line. Sure. I um, I graduated SVA in like 2001 or 2000 or something. And I transferred in from another school and uh, everyone told me not to do it and I was making a mistake and and it was the best decision ever made and I'm, I'm super happy with the outcome of my career there and I think my, um, my life goals kind of have been met. You know, I'm a working, working cinematographer and the school, I mean, I'm not being paid to do this. I mean, I'm happy to come back and say I got a lot out of it. Yeah, Warren. What? Uh, what um, same same question. Um, 
uh, can you speak on your time at, at the School of Visual Arts and uh, where you, I guess, where you thought your trajectory could would be versus where it is now? It might be the same. You might have had this goal, and you're like, obviously, I'm doing Halloween because I wanted to do that from the get go. Right. Okay, I'm not playing sit center field for the Yankees yet, so that's out. <laughs> um, I actually, um, I'm a big comic book fan. I had two loves. I had screenwriting. I loved. I love comic books. So I had a lot of cartooning classes here. I had a teacher named Will Eisner, who amongst comic book guys is like one of the greatest of all time. I had uh, Harvey Kurtzman, I had Art Spiegelman. So I had cartooning. I had a sc screenwriting teacher named our, uh, Mr. Dessou. And uh, I had him for three years. So I, it, it took me years to, to uh, get into the film industry, just struggling artist. It's, it's hard out there. Those squeets are hard. Not the streets, but the squeets. <laughs> and it took me some time after to finally get my first movie, and then after that, getting clientele. If I could tell anyone anything, remember, if you get into show business, it's a business. My wife is, big, is, is a very big advocate on show business is business. So learn about business, learn about how that works. You're not a broke artist or a filmmaker. Be smart about things, because I wish I could go back in time and say, don't do that, or do that, but you learn. So you gotta have people like us saying, don't do that or do that. Yeah. So there you go. It worked out. It took a while, but it worked out. Same for you, Ryan. Um, yeah, I, I, I went into SVA wanting to be a writer-director. And I think during that four-year time, I, I think the the experience helped me become more activated as a horror person, <laughs> someone who wanted to do horror. I don't want to do anything else. That's it. I want to be in the horror industry. Um, and Scream had come out. I, I, I graduated in 98. Scream had come out in 96. And, and it was at that time that I was like, I want to be the next Kevin Williamson. Um, I didn't. But um, it was definitely during that time that I was like, you know, attending film history class and going, OK, you know what, Gene Stavis, I want to, you know, you're showing me this cool film noir movie, but show me some cool horror flicks. Um, but, you know, it was during that time that I just kind of really honed my my love and what I wanted to do. Um, and then it was after that time, you know, it, it, how I became a producer was a very long route, but, um, you know, my time at SVA helped me kind of just focus in on what exactly I loved and what I wanted to become. It wasn't a writer director because what I ultimately realized is I was just better at putting people together and identifying projects and, and, films that I wanted to see happen and, and you know, finding those right. I, I didn't really think I was a great writer or a great director, but I knew people who were great writers yep. and great directors, and I knew how to put them together. So, um, yeah, the school experience helped me focus on all of that. Did uh, you and Michael know each other, given the you were 98 and 2000? Or was <laughs> no, you just like, it was so weird. No, it was it was weird. It was it, we were on Halloween, and then Michael's like, "Yeah, I was at SVA," and I said, "Yeah, me too." But, I mean, I don't know what SVA is like now, but I had like three <laughs> friends and didn't talk to the rest of the school. So I, mean, I think that's the way any kind of school. And, all, and, well, and the funny thing is too is that like years after I graduated too, I was at a I was at a horror convention. I was at Chiller Theater in Jersey, and. Uh, and I ran into this kid who was schlepping his movies called The Roost. And I was like, who are you? And he's like, I'm Ty West. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm Ryan Turk. Nice to meet you. And he's like, yeah, I went to SVA. And I was like, oh, so did I. And then we became friends after that. And then Blumhouse coincidentally wound up doing like a Western with Ty West. It was, after my, it was way before my time. But uh, I run into a lot of graduates from the, from the school. That was, his, that was Ty's most recent film, right? Yeah, Valley Violence. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, I think we, we premiered that. Yeah, that was a good awesome. one. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it turned out great. With Karen Gillan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to tie together how, how you two, was it um, vice principals? Was it? Um, Are you uh, talking about me and David Gordon Green? Yeah, like how, you, how both of your paths came to collide in both uh, being SVA uh, alumni. But I used to, I shot Paranormal Activity 2 for Blumhouse, so I knew the whole Jason Blum gang 
from that whole era. Yeah, think. and it was funny because when we were doing Halloween, I, I didn't know. I mean, the, the history of Halloween is like kind of a uh, at Blumhouse is another story. But when we were putting the crew together, I remember David was like, I said to David, I was like, who do you want to have shoot this? And he said, Michael Simmons. And I was like, click, click, look at him up. And, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, he did uh, Nerve, was it? Uh, it, which is awesome. And then I was like, oh, Paranormal Activity alumni. So, yeah, it was cool. So, um, I just want to touch on also, Warren, you've done, you've already, you took one of my questions by naming all the films, but um, no. I just want to say it again, because there's, I don't, uh, just in case we missed any, but uh, you did the storyboards for Ad Astra, Fences. I was one of the people for Ad Astra. I came in, did the lunar scene, so I'm not the We're guy. just, we're going to give you full credit. <laughs> Fences is just me. Ad Astra, there were several people. We got uh, Straight Outta Compton, Nightcrawler. Need for Speed, Escape Plan, The Collection, The Amazing Spider-Man, and my favorite, You Don't Mess with the Zohan. That was just, yeah, that was me, yeah. Um, I've done a bunch of, I've, I've, I have actually done a bunch of Adam Sandler movies. That was fun to work on. Um, it is a blessing when you get to work on projects that are, you have a good time coming in, you come into the office, and you don't want to go home right away because you're having such a good time there. Other times it's like, can it end, please? Can it end? But no. Um, yeah, it's a, it's just a it's it's a great blessing to be able to be in an industry to use your talent, and they pay you for it. Yeah. You know, David, the uh, you know David Green, we started actually doing commercial together. We started doing. Um, a friend of mine recommended me to do a Mr. Planner's Peanuts commercial. <laughs> And that was our start. And just so happens, he also did feature work. So we did commercials. Then we did the movie Stronger. And then um, some more commercial than, than, than Halloween. And then we really clicked on Halloween, the first one, this one here. And then we just, I just wrapped storyboards for Halloween Ends. Who? Maybe. There's a sequel. Info. Halloween Kills. 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 Ends <laughs> is the third one. See, there's. Ends the, is the third one. Right, there you go. So. <laughs> and then it'll be, be like. Halloween comes back, we're just kidding. Somebody else's problem. You know, it's always... Yeah, everything beyond that is somebody else's problem. <laughs> somebody else. um, so have you had a draw to a horror film, or is this just something that happened with, with the David coming in and you're his guy? Yeah, we sync very well. Here's the thing. I'm not a horror guy, someone that just loves horror. I love like science fiction, action movies, certain comedy movies. Horror is though hella fun to storyboard. That's the weird thing. Like I have, David lets me just come up with sh shots for a movie. He never says I want to have this shot A, wide shot B, camera booms in, C, whatever. Like the there's a certain scene in a bathroom, what, and that's all that I'll say. He let me just come up with that. He didn't say any camera notes. Really, very rare stuff. He just said, "Do it," and then he had little tiny notes afterwards. So he gives me lots of freedom. Do you want to uh, segue to the uh, storyboards? I understand you have some storyboards to show. For we may Halloween. segue. I yeah. love the segue. Oh, wow. Surprises. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So some people do get killed in the movie. Um, so. For these movies, I have to work really fast. In certain movies, I get to take my time and do really detailed storyboards. But in this, it's like, come up with idea, rough things out, show it to David, pass, move on. It's always, every so often, like, um, okay, that's a little bit more time. Now, you notice Jamie Lee's hair? I didn't realize that she had a, she would have the long hair from the movie. So I gave her that, her actual pixie haircut there. And this is uh, something that happens. <laughs> yeah. And then Th Thanos comes in. Yeah. And he snaps his well, fingers. Well, that's in the trailer. So. Well, we, that's <laughs> that's just trailer. Just erase the entire Halloween yeah. history. Yeah. Yeah. And there you go. But yeah, he he just gives me total freedom. He's great to work with. Yeah. It's very funny because I we I spend it. 
hundreds of hours obsessing over these fucking things. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where, how to do it. But I've never met Warren. So. <laughs> and here's the thing. Here's the thing on how we work. A lot of times I'll have a director that we come together, we'll talk face to face, we have a meeting, we'll go over shots, we'll go over what we can do, and, I, and I'll, I'll either draw in the office or I'll go home or whatever. David and I work together on the phone. That's it, on the phone. Um, I've done movies with DPs, we'll work with the DPs and have meetings. We've just met today. I just met Ryan today. So, here's your money, by the way. But, <laughs> yeah, so it's been a very unique thing where, again, where David just trusts me to come up with stuff, and then I guess I give them the foundation, and then he and Mike, they didn't work it out, so. I'm very interested yeah. in, in finding out because you're already kind of touching on it within the producer, storyboard artist, DP, director, collaborative process. I'm, I'm interested in hearing more about how you guys went about, because you, you said it was like all over the phone, but I would like to know, at least with you three, how um, like you kind of worked together on, on Halloween 2018. Well, well, again, my part starts with you. Together. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it starts with yeah. David. Hop, starts with the script, and then David sending the script off to Warren. Yeah, and then we come in later on. It's a bit of a messy rabbit hole, to be right. honest. I yeah. mean, like, you don't even really want to go there. It, right. It's a lot of um, <laughs> correction, recorrection. You know, like then, the, then we send the location photos back to Warren, and then right. he, he addresses the, the location issues. Then, you know, then, then I have meetings with him with David about like what are the triage versions of the thing and yeah. you know. because I don't always have location pictures yeah. so the house that you'll see at the end of the movie I didn't have it at first I had to wait till they found the location locked it off send me pictures of the house and the rooms and then we had to work all that out so um, it is a process my job doing storyboards is to give them a foundation to, to work with and then David and Michael have to work in the real space. Because mm -hmm. when you're on set, it's not just having storyboards. You don't necessarily follow every shot by shot. They can be very helpful. Um, they can be helpful certainly on stunt scenes, on effect scenes. But when you're on set, you have to work out, the, D, the DP, the actor, director will work out, how do we do all this in a real space? Some things they use, some things they don't use. Yeah, there's, uh, especially like, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but when you're dealing with fictional spaces, like this shot has to be done on the studio, this shot's on a burn set, this shot's on the location set, that's how we break down the storyboard. Then we, we cut it all up and put it into lists and columns and stuff. And then they bring that list and column and put it on a piece of cardboard and bring it to set, <laughs> and then I look at it and go, that's a lot to shoot today. <laughs> all right. A lot of times, storyboards have to be cut down. They can't shoot it. They don't have the time to do it. They don't have budget, or it's not practical yeah. because it won't work in the real space. Um, so what was, because I know I, my mind would be like, total. I don't know how I would, I'd probably pass out if I found out I got to work on Halloween. So what would, what, how did you guys like take the news, I guess, or you probably knew it was coming sooner than later, but finding out you're going to work on uh, a, Halloween, a Halloween film, following John Carpenter's Halloween, chronologically. It gets a little into the history. Um, what had happened was, uh, I, I knew, the quick story is, I knew someone who was working on, who was, going to, who was supposed to direct the third installment of, of Halloween in the Rob Zombie legacy for the Weinstein <laughs> Company. Um, and I gave him a call and left a voicemail, and I, I presumed he was in Bulgaria. That's where they were gonna, supposed to shoot it. And uh, he gave me a call right back, and he was like, hey, Ryan, I'm, I'm here, I'm here in LA. And I said, what happened? And he goes, well, they lost the rights to, the wine scenes lost the rights to Halloween. And I was like, oh my God. And I used to work for Fangoria Magazine, and Tony Timpone, who was the editor and my boss at the time, he was like, listen, Ryan, anytime Michael Myers is on the cover of a magazine, it sells out. And I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. And I was always a Halloween fan of, fanatic, of course. Um, and so I, I just reached out to Jason uh, Blum, and I, I said, Jason, the rights are available for Halloween. I don't know how 
how complicated it is or how messy it is, but the Weinsteins no longer have it. They can't make a movie. They're not going to make a sequel. This is our time to pounce. We And I know that Blumhouse typically relies on director-driven films, direct, uh, you know, and in and, and, and that it's like, you know, we, we don't do a lot of crazy, like, you know, snatching up spec scripts and books and comic books. It's really, we're guided by filmmakers and what they want to do within our system. Um, so this was a little outside of our box. And I said, look, it's, I know it's IP and it's, you know, it's a giant, it's, it's a giant franchise, but it would be amazing if we, if we hopped on it. And Jason wrote back to me on that like Saturday or Sunday afternoon. He's like, I'm all over it. And then cut to a couple weeks later, we're sitting in the, <clears throat> we're seen, sitting in a uh, office at Miramax, who Miramax, just so you know, is distanced from the Weinstein Company, and they've traded hands many times over. But um, they're the rights holders, uh, along with Trancus International and Malik Akkad, who is the family rights holder. Anyways, there's a lot of business stuff, but I mean, it was it was incredibly weird and surreal to be sitting in a in a meeting meeting at Mir with Miramax heads and Jason, my boss, and uh, Malik Akkad, and they're like. Okay, so we've talked about all the business aspect of this. Now let's talk about the creative. Ryan, what is Halloween going to be? And I was just like, can we just please make it scary? Like, can we do scary again? Because the last time we saw Michael Myers, he's fighting Busta Rhymes. Like, can we just please, please, please make him scary? Busta's scary, man. <laughs> Trick or treat, motherfucker. I mean, it's like, come on. <laughs> Um, but you know, very much like the Blumhouse system, it were it, you know being director driven. It was okay. Who's who's going to direct this? And David's name came up when I was working for you know the aforementioned website that I ran and Fangoria. I had always David was somebody who who I knew was involved in the Suspiria remake, and he wanted to do a graphic novel adaptation of this thing called Freaks of the Heartland with Steve Niles. And I was like, that's somebody who's an awesome director. He's done amazing dramas. Um, and he wanted to dip his toe into horror, and no one was giving him that chance. And, and so his name came up, and Jason reached out to him, and he just said, he just, apparently he just wrote Jay, uh, David, and just wrote, Halloween? Question mark? And David wrote back, let's talk. And then the next thing I know, we're sitting in a room with David, and hearing his ideas, and there was a lot of crazy ideas that were thrown around the room, you know, like Michael Myers in the big city and all these kind of crazy things. And it wasn't until the very end that David just said, I'm gonna bring in my friend Danny and we're gonna talk about like what the approach is. And I was like, <laughs> who's Danny? And he was like, Danny McBride. And I went, he's bound down, Kenny Powers? <laughs> and he said, yeah, he's a huge genre fan too. Um, and then the next meeting was them coming in and uh, pitching their idea, which was incredible. And it was, and it was like kind of two. We were thinking about two paths. Do we take the the kind of Batman Begins approach, which is clean the slate, cast a new Laurie Strode, cast a new Michael Myers, kind of rewrite history a little bit, maybe rewrite the mythology, or do we take the Force Awakens approach? and pick up with a sequel later on. And, and that was the route we took, and that was the one that really excited David and Danny. And for us, when a filmmaker gets excited about something, that's when we follow their instincts and go with that. And so that's what we did. And then everything else fell into place, and it was a, a fun development process after that. And then that's when you guys came in. So, uh, Michael, what was your <laughs> process as far as getting the chance to work on a Halloween film and coming in as a cinematographer, what you're going to bring to it visually. So, yeah, so I'm a cinephile, you know, like I lived over by anthology archives and would go there every night and I'm into Brisson and all that kind of pretentious <laughs> stuff. So I saw like Halloween as kind of just like a, a weird shot reverse art film, you know, it's just like where and Michael's in that movie for like, 200 frames, you know, and then I'm like, oh, that's a challenge. That's interesting. So uh, I shot this TV show, Vice Principals, with David, and um, I've known him for a long time. And then he texts me, like, something like, who do you think should shoot Halloween? I'm going to direct it. 
And I, I'm a jerk, so I respond like, yeah, I'll shoot your dumb movie. <laughs> <laughs> and so I shot it. So that's how it started, you know? And then um, I'm not like a crazy super fan, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm into the audience. Right. You know, I'm into like, how does the audience perceive scares and suspense and stuff? And, and we did this movie, Paranormal 2, which is just like endlessly doing this kind of stuff. And I wanted to try it again. And it's, it's the hardest genre. I mean, it's like, it doesn't give back. If you shoot a comedy, you're laughing. If you shoot a drama, you're like, wow, man, that, that was, you gave, you gave us something, you know? <laughs> if you shoot a horror film, you're like, is this scary? <laughs> you know? And you, then we ask, we're like, hey, Ryan, is it good? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> You should talk about your call with Dean Cundy. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, I haven't thought about that in a long time. I, 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 Dean Cundy is the original DP of this, of Halloween, and um, he became like the biggest. He shot like, you know, Jurassic Park and stuff. So I had a call with him and I said, just give, you know, give me, give me some, some advice, you know? And, um, and then he basically said, you know, don't follow a trend. Don't do, don't be stylish for stylish sake. Be uh, formal in your storytelling and every shot must serve its purpose. And we tried to, and, he, and then he said, and definitely shoot anamorphic, you know? And, and we, you know, we try to be purposeful with the, the photography, not just, you know, trendy or with it. All right, so I only have time for one more question because we don't want to keep you here till like four in the morning. Um, but so I guess I'll go kind of generic with it. Um, I want to know what your guys' like guilty pleasure horror movies are, like that you're like your go to guilty pleasure film. It's like <sighs> one in the morning and you can't in horror? sleep. Yeah. Horror, just any. Or any, any film. Guilty pleasure? Wow. Yeah. That's funny. My non horror films, Armageddon. And my horror film is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Right. Yeah. Those are good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, guilty pleasure. Because it's not pleasure. Um, <laughs> guilty pleasure, maybe like Valley of the Guanji. I think it was like a stop motion. Yeah, anime. Cowboys so, and Dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe something like that. It's an old movie before you guys were born. Like, <laughs> what stop motion, Daddy? Well, yeah, a long time ago. Kind of like that. I, I mean, for me, it would be like like a Jean-Claude Van Damme thing. You know, like, like Time Cop or, you know, like just like, like what, what can I, uh, or uh, I love that movie Kill, Die, Repeat. What's it called? That um, Live, Die, Repeat? Yeah, yeah. Like you're like. Edge of Tomorrow? Yeah, where it's just like, this is so good, but I don't mind turning it off, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, like this is a, that's a can of word conversation. I mean, like. There's this is the security blanket movies, but guilty pleasure movies. Um, Maximum Overdrive yeah. is my yeah. go-to. Uh, you can listen to me on a commentary on the Blu-ray right now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they just did the LA screening, right? That's right. And I was very jealous because I was gone. Um, and then if you guys, all right, look, I'll, I'll throw one out to you that you can go and buy on eBay because you won't be able to get it anywhere else. Is Full Eclipse? Anybody know Full Eclipse? Okay, Mario Van Peebles plays a werewolf cop. <laughs> and it's heavily inspired by Chris Claremont, 90s X-Men. And it's so badass. And HBO produced this. HBO produced this movie. And I'm trying my hardest to try to figure out where the rights lie. I'm going to so find that movie just, now because I love Chris it. Claremont. Oh, yeah, dude. We're on Facebook. I'm going like, to send you Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to send you the DVD. It's, it's great. amazing. Um, if I can say this, it was a horror movie in like 1975 called Race with the Devil. Oh, yeah, Warren Oates. Really good movie. I saw yeah. that in the theater when you got there. You go, man. And you were all like not born yet, but it was a really great movie. Find it. I think it's online, maybe. It's on and Shutter. what? It's on Shutter. Yeah. Shutter. Okay. And if you haven't seen it, Spielberg's first feature, Duel. You ever see that? Yeah. If you haven't seen it, it still rocks. See those movies. Yeah. And also, I just want to throw a shout out to Project Metal Beast. Just Kane Hodder, who played Jason Voorhees. Okay. He plays a werewolf with metal skin. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> we uh, won't be remaking that, but you asked for guilty pleasures. Before uh, we run out of here, any sage advice to the students in the audience about their entering the industry or uh, what to take advantage of or at, at SVA and... Growing up, yeah, I'd say uh, <laughs> go to bed before 10 p.m. and you guys are nuts for watching a movie at midnight. <laughs> no, that's I have nothing. <laughs> um, I would I would say just collaborate. 
and relationships. That was the biggest thing that I took away from it, as well as um, refining your focus, like focusing on what exactly you want to do. Um, we have a lot of interns who come through Blumhouse, and I just say, you know, they're all in film school, and I'm like, what do you want to do? And they're like, well, I want to direct, or I might want to edit, and I might want to DP. I'm like, find what it is you want to do. What do you love? What do you want to make your career? What do you want to make your job out of? And find that and focus on that. Here's another one. Don't piss your time away. Mm. Find something that you love and work at it and work at it and work at it. My son has a passion. He works at it every day. Find what it is. And when you find older people, ask questions. The worst thing we can say is, leave me alone. Just ask. Ask, how do you do that? How do you get that? How did you learn about this? Where can I get this? And then and my wife would also tell me, figure it out. There you go. Yeah, I, I want to add one thing, too, which is I write fan letters all the time. I mean, I still write fan letters. You know, and, and a lot of people appreciate being appreciated. Yeah. I, did, I, I did that with, I don't know who watches Scream Queens on FX mm -hmm. when it was out. But I wrote Ryan Murphy because I, Jason Blum had Ryan Murphy's email. And I was like, send me Ryan Murphy's email. And I just said, I really love what you're doing with Scream Queens. He didn't write back. Yeah. But I like to believe that he was like, oh, there's the one person that no, thinks I, it. I've, I've watched episodes of Locked Up Abroad and wrote to the DP. Because I was like, man, you did a great job. And I know what those budgets are like. Yeah. I've, had, I've had young artists who found me online. And they'll ask me about storyboards. And I give them advice. And then... You know, it's, it's helpful. Just, you, it can't hurt to ask. We're online. You'll find us somewhere. All right. I hope you guys enjoy the movie. Thank you, Michael Simmons, Warren Drummond, Ryan Turek. And thank you, Matthew, for moderating.